Hi everyone and welcome back to New Egg TV. My name is Paul and today we have once again the omnipresent JJ here from ASUS. JJ, thank you for stopping by. Thank you for having me. And uh, today we're going to talk about a new X79 motherboard from ASUS. This is the P9X79WS. WS standing for Workstation. Uh, ASUS has a few different lines of boards that you may have seen. They have the Tough Series, for example. They have ROG boards. And they also have Workstation boards. Workstation of course means they're meant specifically for workstations, so people doing enterprise level applications, people doing uh, really tough CPU compute or GPU compute applications, and there's a lot of features uh, along with just the general x79 goodness and uh, Intel Sandy Bridge E capabilities that this motherboard has uh, that you guys have integrated. So uh, what can you tell us that you guys have done especially for our workstation fans out there? Well, uh, yeah, I mean, first and foremost, you're right, definitely right that we focus this at the workstation environment, but we do pride ourselves in the board actually does meet a lot of different segmentation models. Um, so, you know, sometimes it's just, a, you know, an enthusiast content creation guy, somebody that's, you know, really adamant about having a lot of flexibility, and they do a lot of Photoshop work. Maybe they do Avid, and uh, maybe they do, you know, Sonar, Cakewalk, you know, Vegas. Um, you know, it's really for anybody that's actually just looking at a lot of flexibility and connectivity when it comes to GPUs as well as to network connectivity. But specifically in terms of what we've done here on the WS is we keep a lot of the hallmark features that we introduce and we've discussed for the X79 boards as a whole, such as the digital power design for both the VRM and for the DRAM and standard things like our UEFI implementation. But we've also incorporated some special design features specifically for the workstation environment. So one of the classic ones that we can see here is when we look at the PCIe connectivity, we see nothing but physical by 16 slots. And the focus is here is because we want to enable up to four-way support on this board. So you have up to four-way SLI, or you could put one GPU, another GPU, another GPU, and then another GPU. Um, you know, in some configurations, though, you might not have users that are actually utilizing, um, let's say, like, you know, GTX 580s or 560s or something like that. You might have them using it in a more workstation environment where we do validation with Tesla and also Quadro cards. So they could be running a primary GPU display out, maybe a Quadro card, and then using Tesla cards, which actually don't have any display outputs. They're GPU compute cards where they're running heavy types of GPU simulation, uh, things like end body, um, gas and oil research, medical rendering, um, aeronautics, all kinds of different types of applications that are specific to those fields of research. Um, but this board definitely fits its environment in a lot of different configurations. It could still find its way into a high-end gaming space with this type of connectivity available to you. So that's one of the awesome things that you have in terms of that native four-way support right enabled on the board in terms of the PCIe uh, lanes. Now, in terms of some of the just the general connectivity, if we go ahead and go over to the back plane on the I.O., we can see here that we still have a lot of uh, kind of cutting edge connectivity with our USB 3 support, which features our USB 3 boost technology. Um, for the LAN, we can see we actually have dual LAN, but this is dual Intel LAN. And we have also incorporated Intel's server grade uh, gigabit NIC on here. So that gives us even better performance, better interoperability with server grade operating systems, as well as operating systems independent of uh, the Microsoft Windows OS. So in addition to that, we have legacy connectivity with 1394 FireWire. We've got four USB 2 ports here. We've got the Oplink Tostical out, which coincides with our 7.1 audio which also features our Realtek 898 codec package, which has the DTS Suite Ultra 2, uh, which features the DTS Connect. So once again, that's not necessarily something all workstation users utilize. You might be a general enthusiast, but you'll still be able to take advantage of that new high fidelity, lower compression, higher bit rate encoding package. Um, for this, this button here, this goes tag team with our PVC disk feature in the USB BIOS flashback. And when not working under the USB BIOS flashback mechanism, uh, all these ports serve as standard USB 2 ports. And then, uh, once again, for the Soho kind of SMB market, we have two USB, excuse me, PS2 connectors for the keyboard and for the mouse. Alrighty. Um, now, when we go back to the actual physical board here in terms of the layout, outside of the PCI Express, we have our standard six fan controls, uh, excuse me, six fan headers present on the board where we're offering full manual control for the headers, whether it's within the UEFI or within the operating system. And we've got some great placement, as we can see here in the key positioning, especially where we've got the two here for push and pull fan configurations. Um, although ideally, uh, for X79, we do generally advocate um, closed loop water cooling systems, such as those like an H80 or an H100, something along those lines, just because they maximize not obstructing a lot of this real estate and allowing us to make use of all eight DIMMs, which especially in the workstation platform is another key point. When it comes to validation, 
we do take time to validate not only the standard series CPUs, so like the Extreme Edition, the K part, but we're also validating Xeon CPUs and also ECC based memory for users that are running more critical based applications, server environment, workstation environment, where they need those integrity checks to ensure better overall reliability for the platform. When uh, we take a look here in terms of the actual heatsink assembly, you can see we have a pretty elaborate heat pipe assembly. So we cover the actual digital VRM that we have here, um, our chokes, our new um, driver, excuse me, our new um, MOSFET package, which is our dual end MOSFET package. And we have a centered heat pipe design that extends all the way down here and runs into the actual PCH to help us extend the overall cooling performance to help extend overall normal stock operation or overclocking performance. For the connectivity that we see here on this end, we have our standard front USB 3 connector, as well as we have eight serial ATA. Of course, six of those are specific to the PCH itself. So we have the two SATA 6G ports, and then we have the four SATA 3G ports. Then we have two more SATA 6G ports, but those are our SSD caching ports. So once again, just like we've discussed on some of other boards like the Tough, that allows the user to maybe run a high performance single SATA 6G SSD here, and then maybe a smaller capacity SATA 6G SSD with a large capacity maybe like two terabyte hard drive for their storage volume, which would be great in a workstation or server environment. So you can give your mass storage quite a boost there in the access times. Correct, correct. Um, in terms of the little uh, bottom portions here, we have a couple of unique headers where we have a front, excuse me, an internally raised USB connector port. Now what this is for is this is predominantly focused at people that are using professional applications that require a dongle, such as like 3D Studio Max, Maya, Blender, programs like that sometimes require a USB dongle, and these dongles can be quite expensive. So the user might not necessarily want to have them connected externally to the system, or they don't want to lose it. Um, so you can take that dongle, plug it internally here, then have a lock chassis and never have to worry about losing it or having somebody steal potentially that expensive dongle, uh, which is required for the program to initialize. In addition to that, we have our standard debug LED. We have the power and reset buttons. And then we still have, of course, our standard TPU and EPU switches, which allow us to have quick and easy controls for either undervolting the CPU with no effect to CPU performance, or the TPU for quick and easy effective overclocking, uh, such as an example with maybe like your uh, extreme or your K part going to like 4.3 gigahertz, which is the flip of the switch. So that kind of rounds out some of the, the overall design features in terms of what the WS has to offer. Um, on the kind of one of the last notes we want to talk about is definitely validation and testing. As part of the WS product line, we do take more time to actually test a wide range of peripherals, such as uh, SCSI adapters, serial ATA adapters, um, fiber channel adapters, different types of more complex host controllers, um, which can sometimes have more complicated option ROMs. These option ROMs sometimes have initialization problems with BIOSes or UEFIs in our situation that don't necessarily always have acceptance to these larger option ROMs that are on these external controllers. So when you're purchasing the WS, just like we take the time to do validation for Xeons, for ECC memory, that's also happening with external peripheral devices or internal peripheral devices as well. So it gives a lot of robust usefulness to the platform. So for anyone in a, an enterprise environment, or even if you are a gamer, but you're interested in using your computer for some much higher end uh, types of uh, computing activities, uh, the workstation board kind of has all of that. Uh, as well as all of the benefits of the X79 chipset and the compatibility with the latest Intel Sandy Bridge E processors. Yep, you got it. All right, I think that's going to wrap it up for this video. Hope you've learned a little bit more about the Intel, I'm sorry, the Asus P9X79 workstation board. I'm Paul with Newegg TV. This has been JJ with Asus. Thanks again, JJ, for stopping by. Thank you. For more tech videos, please head over to our Newegg YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe. You can also check out JJ on the Asus ROG YouTube channel. I'm Paul with Newegg TV. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.